Boys of the God, we are pretty here. Comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 1. Father, now it's ready for us to read. Please the stand up so that we can read the Boys of God with um, the reverence. Let's read. Let's read in one voice. On the third day, the third day the wedding took to place at uh, Cana uh, in Galilee. Jesus was there, and Jesus, there, and Jesus and his disciples had asked him to invite the wedding. By the way, the way. The when the wine is gone, Jesus' mother said to him, Let me have more wine. Woman, why do you want more wine? Jesus is your wife. My hour has not yet come. Is it not the same to the servants? Do whatever he needs to do. You know the answer to six stone water jars, the kind of music of our shepherd Jesus, who serves the many of our shepherds, which each holds the twenty three of the gallons. Jesus says to his servants, Do the jars of the water, so they fill with them to the green. Then he told them, Now I will sum up all and attend to the master of the banquet. And the master of the banquet will spend his words and I will return on it to be quiet. If you have a new class, this is where it had come from. The servants had come to the whole world of the world. And they had to go right to the side. That's that. Everyone brings out the choice of wine first, and then the chicken wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have said that that is still now. What John did here, he did not look at me, but the first of the signs, through which he revealed his glory, and he said, the sight of me, I have this, and I have come to the king of the world, who is Christ in our and for us, and his disciples, every day he prayed for four feelings. Amen. You see this? God is good. Oh, all the time. time. All the time. God is good. And today, my son, my father, Jesus, is the, the ultimate bridegroom, the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, the Gospel of John is really concerned to bear witness to the divinity of Jesus. The Apostle John, having seen the divine signs, wonders, and miracles performed by our Lord Jesus Christ, especially his deliverance, Death on the cross for all sinful humanity and the resurrection has become absolutely certain that Jesus is God Himself. He wants to tell all the gospel readers that not only is Jesus the Savior, but He also is the God, the same Creator, incarnated, incarnated in human. So it is worth noting, the gospel is written in the Genesis framework. That is, notice right in the opening statement. In the beginning, there was the world. The world was with God, and the world was God. The phrase, in the beginning, is the opening statement of Genesis, the creation story. The book of Genesis is bearing witness to God's creation of the whole world, the heaven and the earth, and all the living creatures in it. It also tells us how man has fallen from the right relationship with God, the Creator, and how dreadful the ramification of the fall is. The outcome of the fall of man is the death, both physically and spiritually. Another inevitable pain that man has to suffer along with that is the deprivation. By the total deprivation, I mean that we humans have lost the image and the likeness of God. And as a result, we have come to suffer the loss of shalom. That is both physical and spiritual peace and abundance for living. The state of shalom and the enjoyment of shalom are secured only when we keep the right relationship with God. And world and with the fellow creatures inside the world. The sinful human nature, however, has been dominating humanity, driving them into the destiny of destruction, death, and the total deprivation or emptiness are the existential problem of all humans. So the reality of a human problem is 
reflected in the issue at the Kena wedding. The wine, the cons constituent the substance for the enjoyment of Shalom at the wedding was depleted. The only way to solve such a fundamental problem is for God to engage in the new creation of man. So it can be said that the gospel is about God's amazing grace that he has new created man out of the blood of his one and only son. In the book of Genesis, God created man out of earth. Earth is called Adam in Hebrew. The first man was thus called Adam, for his substance was formed out of earth. But the new created man is not formed out of earth, but with the blood of the incarnate Son of God. All believers of Christ Jesus are, therefore, the new creation, as confirmed in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, which read, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Amen. So among the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Gospel of John is more concerned to tell us about God's amazing new creation of man through the blood of his incarnate son. We can notice that the Apostle John fits this his new creation schema, the creation framework found in the book of Genesis. So as the book of Genesis writes the narratives of creation in the form of a formality, so does the Gospel of John. We see that God's creation was done in six days, and on the seventh day, God rested, which means the Sabbath. With the nuance of creation, in seven days, the Gospel of John writes the chapter 1 and the first half of the chapter 2, employing the chronological phrase, the next day. John declares that the first day of the new creation through the incarnation of God by means of the phrase in the beginning. The second day of the new creation is announced in verse 20, which reads, The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the third day of the new creation schema is in verse 36 which speaks about the Lord's first disciples. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. Now, verse 37, they followed Jesus. Verse 43 is signifying the fourth day of the new creation work of the Lord Jesus. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Simon Philip said to him, follow me. And today's passage in, in chapter 2 opens with the word on the third day. The phrase on the third day means it is the seventh day, as mentioned in the book of Genesis. The seventh day is the Sabbath day. Now on the seventh day, the Lord Jesus fulfilled the first miracle in his public ministry. The miracle was to turn the water to the choice wine the wedding ceremony at Cana in Galilee. So what's the point of the message that the Apostle John was trying to make in the Jesus' first miracle on this day? The message is that Jesus is the true bridegroom of the creation. Oh, and he is the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> so, the performance of the miracle on the third day, which is as the matter of fact, the seventh day, as we add up, should be understood in the light of the meaning of the Sabbath. We know that the Lord took a rest on the Sabbath, seventh day after the six days of the creation works. But God's rest does not mean that He did not do anything. God's Sabbath means that the triune community of the Godhead celebrates the good purpose of creation. The good purpose of creation is to have man created in God's image serve God, the Creator, as their king and their bridegroom. In other words, Sabbath means that the Creator and the creation together celebrate the covenant 
bliss, blessing, happiness, and joy as experienced by the bridegroom and bride at the wedding party. Now, in this sense, man should have participated in the Sabbath, but the original Adam failed to participate in the Sabbath. So Jesus, the Son of God, had come, and there he has come to make the fallen Adam anew, so that he, as a new creation, can participate in the God's Sabbath. Now that Jesus has come to make the fallen Adam anew is declared in the divine act of turning the water into the wine. The substantial change of the water into the wine simply points to what the blood of Jesus will do. The blood of Jesus is the power to change the sinners into the righteous. The blood of Jesus is the power to transform the fallen and the broken into the whole. The wine symbolizes the blood of Jesus that establishes the new covenant between the Creator and the new created men and women. The new covenant can be understood as the spiritual wedding covenant between the Creator and the Church of the new created man. So Jesus' ministry is all about the creation ministry and the new covenant ministry. So I would like to say again that the meaning of God's Sabbath involves an eternal bliss of the spiritual wedding between the Creator and the community of men and women will be created in God's image. So in other words, our faith in Christ Jesus has a meaning that we have a wedding spiritually. We as the church are men and women. We created in His image. Amen. Isn't that awesome? That's what Jesus' miracle performed on the seventh day. The wedding at Cana is signifying that Jesus' saving ministry is for him to become the true bridegroom of the church of the new created men and women is even more signified by divine work of providing the choice wine. So it is worth noting that when the wine ran out, the bridegroom, the host of the wedding, was responsible to provide more. But it was not the bridegroom of the wedding, but Jesus who provided the wine. And this signifies that Jesus is the ultimate of the wedding ceremony. It's not the guest who is responsible for providing wine when it's one one when it runs out, right? But at this end of the wedding, who was supplied by the to run out? Oh, Jesus Christ, because he is the ultimate bridegroom. So by performing the first miracle of turning the water into wine, Jesus set out his ministry of new creation, that he would become the eternal bridegroom of all believers, cleansed of their sin stained by his blood, and by shedding on the cross his blood, that is the new covenant wine Jesus did finish his ministry. On the third day, he rose again from the dead and has been enthroned at the right hand of God as the eternal king and the bridegroom. In other words, he has come to his eternal Sabbath, has called the Lord of Sabbath. So, in the Apostle John employs on the third day, a reminder of that truth. Our Lord Jesus, who is our eternal bridegroom, is the Creator who makes us new, the Lord of Sabbath, who leads us into God's perfect shalom, that is the heavenly wedding celebration filled with abundance, joy, and peace. That is the best thing yet to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the ultimate bridegroom, the provider of all the things we need, as in, and the prepared best things, the best wine, which we will celebrate and we see him face to face, mm -hmm. Father's place. Yeah. So yeah. looking forward to that, yeah. let's remain faithful. Now it is our heart while we are walking in this earthly journey. Mm -hmm. So let's encourage one another with support and love. Father, thank you. Bless you. Thank you for your life to be worn. Thank you for your the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Creator of God, embodied, is embodied in human, and He is our eternal bridegroom whom we can have wonderful, wonderful, blessed covenant life. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.